Welcome back, everybody. It's me, Logan, from the old Pixley Farm, and today we're at the Moravian Cemetery showing part one of some very interesting monuments and grave sites. This is the grave of the Dalahan family, and as you can see, there's a train. As you can see there. there this is from multiple, multiple people. You've got lots of children. Alice... Dalahan, Emily Dalahan, and a uh, relative of them, Ernest Huffman, just a baby. Um, Herman Dalahan, 1886 to 37. No, 1866 to 1937, yeah. Um, guessing his wife Lucy, maybe? No. I'm not sure. But Lucy, 1855 to 48. And then Henry. 1857 to 35, and then Hubert Dalahan, 1893 to 93, and then Oren Dalahan, 1893 to 1906. Then, got some other mi interesting monuments as well. The Pixley, what a surprise! The Pixleys, yes, this is them right here. This is also for a family. You've got Asa Pixley Jr., 1837 to 1901. He's probably the one that I would not doubt. I bet you he was the one who bought this. His wife, Celestia, 1842 to 1917. I believe this is actually their son, John Ellis Pixley, 1872 to 1910. And finally, I'm guessing this, well, this is probably their grandson. I'm not really sure. Preston E. Pixley, 1898 to 1923. As you see right there, World War One, and then the Indian head. So yeah, that is their monument. As you can see, this very large monument. But um, then you got the Thompsons here. Two parents, or the parents and the child, unfortunately. This is the Thompson grave. As you can see, this is very. Um, this probably took a lot of time to make, especially. For this uh, detail on there. It goes for Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. Specifically Mary E. Thompson. 1869 to 44. And then her husband Stephen B. Thompson. 1871 to 16. To 1916. And then their son. Unfortunately. An infant. This probably looks better on camera. I cannot read it on here. I, I believe this is 1911 to 1911. I cannot read it. But um. Yeah, infant son. Then you've got some more. The Brown family. This is their marker. Here. Mainly for Eliza Baker. 1839 to 1915. Joseph C. Brown. Look at look at how they carve this here. The B. That's pretty cool. 1854 to 34. And his wife, Annette Annette. 1856 to 1910. And then I'm guessing this is um, either a wife or a sister to Joseph. I'm not really sure. Nellie, 1854 to 1938. And behind is Cleta M. White Brown Shackleford, 1910 to 1968. And then William E. Brown, 1880 to 1961. And Flora E. Brown, 1883 to 1963. That's their monument. And then next are very large ones. Even larger than the ones that you've seen. Henry and Augusta Mathis. Henry was born December 2nd, 1844 and died April 25th, 1930. Augusta was born July 4th, Independence Day, 1855 and died June 17, 1916. Their headstone took a probably no doubt a long time to make. You can see the Bible in the middle. And this one with the leaves banner on both sides and it may look like it was not supposed to be like this carved like this but it was but as you can see very large markers out uh, here the next one we have charlotte and fred libke charlotte was born june 12 1840 and died february the 21st 1915 and at the top is his mother it's very intricate at the top and then this down the middle and down there on both sides, and then Fred, or Frederick, 
I believe he was probably born in Germany, June the 3rd, 1836, died May 22nd, 1918. Then over here, you've got even more interesting monuments. This is the last of the, this actual row here. It's uh, Benjamin Franklin Clodfelter and his wife Elizabeth. Mr. Franklin, or Mr. Benjamin Franklin was born September the 18th, 1845, and died November 19, 1926. Elizabeth was born April 18, 1853, and died March 22nd, 1914. Now, Benjamin was actually um, married once before, or no, after Elizabeth passed away, he got married again to Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann, wife of B.F. Clodfelter, June the 10th, 1851, to March the 1st, 1924. And over here, there's an, there is no headstone right here, but you can see, you can see that little stone right, right there at the end, and you got it right here, which could indicate that there was a, there's a grave here, and there obviously is because it is sunk, it is clearly sunk in right here, so there has to be a grave there. And then over here, we have the couches, George C. Couch, with the C top, with this at the up here and then these across look at how they carved this all smooth and then they just left this here to make it look better george was born march the 21st 1852 and died april 16 1931 his wife died before him she um, that meant that she was a consort eliza his consort or wife october the 16th 1854 to january 15 1913 then this one is similar to Henry Mathis's grave back there. This is Asa and Hester Higgins. Asa was born on August 6, 1836, and died October the 28th, 1915. Hester was born March 14, 1841, and died November the 11th, 1932. At the bottom, this is mother and father, and then Higgins at the bottom. You see here, we've got this beautiful, beautifully carved. See, it looks like this would have been taller, but it actually wasn't. It was supposed to be made like this. You can kind of see the cutting point to where it was not made, to where it's supposed to be looking like this. And you can see this very beautiful in the middle, this wreath in the middle. The banner is still going out. That's very, that is, I really like that, to be honest. But there are still more monuments. <laughs> this, I guess you could call this a monument. George Coakley. I mean, it's a pretty large stone. You see here, the C, and then this again. George Coakley was born on August 25th, 1851, and he died December 27th, 1913. His wife, Phoebe, it just says died February the 15th, or the 5th, 1935. Now, the bad thing about this part is that look what they did. Look what they did here. They put died February. Look at the amount of space they have right there. That's not very much space. And then George has a headstone. Right here, it's meant that he is buried behind the headstone here. He's buried back here. Because the people that are in front of him are buried behind it too. Their stone too. But his wife does not have one of these, unfortunately. So I'm guessing this is just for him. But it's a nice marker too, honestly. But here, this one actually fell backwards a long time ago. You can actually still see the dirt and the scratch marks of when it fell. So right here. It's only for one person though. I thought it'd be for more than one. But it's just for one woman. It's just for one person. It says Blackney on it. This is Lucy Dora, the wife of Charles A. Blackney. 1891 to 19... Uh, I believe that's 1919. But Charles isn't even buried in this state. He's I think he's buried... I'm not sure, but he's not buried in this state. Because after she died, he got married again. Okay, you got uh, James or... James, yes, James Hines are here. His, everybody actually, during his lifetime, like before he passed away, everybody called him James. Everybody called him James. So James M. Hines, January 13th, 1839, to September 17, 1913. Susan, his wife, was born September 22nd, 1844, and then never came back to put when she died. But... I really don't like that they don't, that they forget, but I guess it's just because they forget. I'm not really sure. Then you've got Mr. and Mrs. John Seibert. John was born May 5th, or February 15th, 1864, and died December 6th, 1911. Elizabeth, his wife, was born 
July 15, 1867, and died. Whenever they, whenever she passed away, they had to try to fit this, this down here, which is why it looks smaller, because they had to try to fit that in there. She died May 26, 1933. You can tell from far away that they tried to fit the May 26, 1933 there. But just because they recently, or they have a, not recently, but just because they have such a pretty marker, I found these on the ground. These are little flowers here. I don't think that they, I don't see any headstones that they could go to. So I'm just going to give them this. Um, there we go. Very nice markers. And here the great houses look like they have, they have a pretty cool marker. See, like this is a newer grave. Right behind, so these are buried behind the grave. This is Andrew J. and his wife, Rebecca Greyhouse. Andrew was born April 20... Is that another G April 21st? April 21st, 1835, and died January 2nd, 1914. Rebecca, his wife, was born May 14, 1846, and died October the 29th, 1917. And they have their mother and father, or father and mother markers there. Then you have George and Alta Marks. Now, the last name spelling of M-A-R-K-S was actually changed to Marks with an X because they have a grandson buried behind them down there, over there, that's spelled M-A-R-X. George was born 1871 and died 1934. And his wife, Alta, was born 1871 and died 1918. There's a lot of women who died before their husbands back then. And nowadays, it's the opposite, it seems like. Not that much, but it just it's seeming like that. Here's Mr. and Mrs. Brake. You see the flowers here? See that there? So you got Jacob J. Brake. June 13th, 1832 to April the 8th, 1915. Margaret, his wife, September 19, 1839 to March 14th, 1920. He was almost... She was getting into her 80s. Now, here is grandson of, of George. Was it George or not? What was his name again? I think it was George and Alta Marks, I believe so. Um, yeah, George and Alta Marks, yeah. This is actually their grandson over here. He's buried in a... And he's, he's the only person buried in a tomb, and specifically a concrete one. Dennis Leslie Marks, May 1st, 1926, to June the 12th, 1933. He's buried in this concrete tomb. He's the only person buried in a tomb in this cemetery. Which means that, like, um, Dennis was... Obviously, you can tell that he's buried behind the stone because, like, this person buried in front of him or buried right here. He's buried behind, and then these two are behind, yeah. But I... Yeah, like, this, these stones here, they, they obviously don't belong leaning up against the marker there, like, out here somewhere, which indicate, now, that wouldn't be very much room if they're right there. If they're supposed to be right here, that wouldn't be very much room with, between that. I'm not really sure, though. It doesn't really seem like there's that much room, but maybe it is. I'm not really sure. So that is pretty much it for part one. I might have a part two, no doubt. So just stay tuned for that. Yes, guys, I am back creating videos. I'm sorry that I haven't posted in such a long time. I just... I wanted to take a break, to be honest. That's pretty much it. Subscribe for more videos.